Welcome to Talk Show Night. Our first guest is a guy who is effectively my boss, James Keast, the editor-in-chief of Exclaim magazine. Chances are, if you're watching this, you know Exclaim. It's the only national music paper in this beautiful country, free from coast to coast. Awesome. I write for it. A bunch of people who work for this show write for it. Ladies and gentlemen, James Keast. You can't hear that that well, but it's typing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Nice touch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We figured, you know, we usually try to play band's music and the keyboard <laughs> is your instrument. <laughs> yeah. Maybe? Does that work? Is yeah, that we have nothing but electric typewriters. <laughs> and uh, it's sort of like Mad Men. Teams of copy editors. Yeah. Uh, lots of uh, vivacious young women in, <laughs> in, in, in a fleet of desks. And, and young people running back and forth yelling, <laughs> copy! Huge papers <laughs> flying behind them. Yeah. I want to believe that this is yeah, true sort of like so Brazil bad. meets Mad Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've been editing Exclaim kind of forever. Seems like forever. How, how many? I was actually going to count and I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, my first issue writing was November 94. And my first issue as editor was June 95. And ironically, my now wife was on the cover of the June 95 issue, even though it was totally unrelated to her now being my wife. Wow. Alison Outhit, who was in a Halifax band called Rebecca West, that uh, only people who are my age remember. <laughs> and Red Exclaim in that, <laughs> that month in 1995. Yeah. Right on. That's, That's like really eerie. They were on a tractor eerie. for no reason. <laughs> Just because like... Band photos. Band photography has come a long way. Now you have train tracks. Yeah. Graffiti. Yeah. Alleys. Warehouses. Yeah. 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 All great the, options. Uh, the, the freight elevator door is a very popular yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. You've been able to do a, you know, a lot of different interviews. One of the questions that's in the questionnaire every month in the magazine is, what has been your strangest celebrity encounter? And I'm curious if your job as the editor-in-chief of a you know, national music magazine has afforded you any strange celebrity encounters that you would say were, in fact, the strangest. David Cronenberg was pretty strange. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> and it was for his film Existence. And he was trying to convince me that uh, the universe is essentially a clean slate and that when each individual of the seven billion on the planet or whatever, when they wake up, that they create the universe anew in their imagination in their moment of waking. Of course. And Hold I was on. like, you, you, you couldn't get this? You couldn't. I have 10 minutes and I, you're throwing, I can't dispute that in, and also ask you about your movie. And <laughs> I, I just didn't, I wasn't mm. able to kind of get my teeth into what he was trying to say and mm. dispute it when clearly he, uh, the, the intellectual armor that he was wielding was bigger and stronger than mine. What a douche. <laughs> like, I would love to be So like, then instead so we talked about the effects in the movie. Yeah, there you go. Because that's like, that's cool stuff with the skin. So you did the CG in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I've done that before. But like, imagine if like, you know, like you sat down for this interview and we were like, so, like how long have you been editing the magazine for? And you're like, I guess forever. <laughs> I, I also, uh, I was Roberto Benigni's first Torontonian. Oh, yeah? Uh, Did he when, hug you or, like, kiss you? Uh, he was very... He gave me one of these. Oh, <laughs> nice. You're my first one! Yeah. You're my first Torontonian! Then did he jump up on the couch and kind of <laughs> hop around? He was and... very much as he is on film. He said that he was afraid to come here. And I was like, really? Like, internationally, I think Toronto's not seen as a yeah. particularly scary place. And he said, well, the, the only thing I know about Toronto is... Uh, every David Cronenberg movie is set here, and it seems like a horrible, terrifying place. <laughs> well, you know, why don't we come back, talk more about some of the famous people that you know, <laughs> take a break, hit the basement for some rock and roll, and then come back with more James Keist on Talk Show Night at Juicebox Manor. <laughs>